hey, I've got a question for you. Do you and I see people the way Jesus does? Would you think about that a little bit? This morning as we're together, we're gonna talk about that. That passage in Matthew 9, verse 36 says this, and seeing the multitude, he, Jesus, felt compassion on them, for they were distressed and downcast like sheep without a shepherd. Look at this next passage here, this up. There's a, an article, Dateline in 2008, Beijing, thousands of children in southwest China have been sold into slavery like cabbages to work as laborers in more prosperous areas such as the, the booming southern province of Guangdong, a newspaper said. The children generally fall between the ages of 13 and 15, but many look under it, you know, under 10, it added. The youngest kids found in the child labor market were only seven and nine years old. According to a contract exposed by an undercover reporter, a child laborer is paid off three and a half UN, about 70 US cents an hour, and, and must work at least 300 hours a month. Well, these kids are robust and can do the toughest work, a foreman was quoted as saying. As he pulled a, a scrawny girl to stand beside him, the paper said. Xinhua News Agency said the, the county government had sent officials to rescue the children, but some were unwilling to leave, having been sold into slavery by their parents or volunteering to work themselves. The next one, please. This poverty-stricken father of a slumdog millionaire child star, Rubina Ali, who, who played young Latika, allegedly pl planned to sell his nine-year-old daughter to capitalize on her fleeting fame. According to a British paper, in a, a bid to escape India's real-life slums, Rafiq Qureshi put his daughter up for adoption, demanding millions of rupees worth 200,000 pounds, about 300,000 U.S. dollars at the time. As he offered the deal to an undercover reporter, Rafiq declared, I have to consider what's best for me, my family, and Rubina's future. One more. The same paper reports that shockingly this sort of transaction is far from unusual in an impoverished nation where life comes cheap and children are often treated as a commodity. Filmed in Mumbai's seething pauper ghetto, it depicts starkly true scenes of poverty and child cruelty where orphans are blinded and crippled by Fagin-like thugs and forced to beg on the streets. And with a staggering 11 million children abandoned in India every year, there is no shortage of young prey. And finally, one more, one more statistic. It's estimated that as many as 27 men, women, and children around the world are victims of what is now often described with the umbrella for terminology, this, this term, human trafficking. So my question for us this morning is, do you and I see people the way Jesus does? In that passage in verse 36, it says, he saw the people and he felt compassion for them because they were distressed and downcast like sheep without a shepherd. But I don't know how you get there. How do you get to verse 36 and then on to verse 37 and 38 and beyond, you can't get there until you go to verse 35. You have to go through 35 to get to verse 36. Next slide. So as Jesus was going through all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness, then what does it say happens? Then, seeing the multitudes, he felt compassion on them. And then he, said, he calls his disciples and says, the harvest is plentiful, the laborers are few. Beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. My thesis today is that we've got to go through 35 to get to 36. If I want to see people the way Jesus does, I've got to get out there. I've got to get my hands dirty. I've got to get some dirt under my fingernails. This morning, we're going to look at four principles from Jesus' ministry briefly, and then three applications about how we can per perhaps get this in our hearts. In verse 35, we see four, four things. Jesus was going through all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, healing every kind of disease. He was doing these four things, going, teaching, proclaiming, healing. So the first one, Jesus was intentional in his movement. One more there. He was intentional in his movement. He was going to the people. So see what Jesus does. He goes to where they are. He doesn't show up on the scene and hang out his Messiah shingle, does he? I'm open for business. Come see me sometime. No. He goes to where they are. He says, going. It's an action word, isn't it? He's going to the people. 
There's an author, Robert Lewis, in his book, The Church of Irresistible Influence, shares this thought. Our postmodern world is tired of words. It wants real. Real is everything. Real is convincing. Church, he says, is a community of people who present living proof of a loving God to a watching world. Isn't that a great definition for a church? It's a group of people who present living proof. And that's what the world is desperate for. It is to see living proof of a loving God that is real. And that's why we've got to get out. That's why we've got to go. One more statistic here, this, this big circle. You'll see, you've seen this before. It's the, the purple part is the unreached in the world, the three billion who are currently beyond the gospel. There's no church in their culture that has the resources to take the gospel to them. And then that brown section there are the, the untold, those who have had the church in the, close by but are yet to understand and hear and, and respond to the gospel. We still must go to the nations. Look at what John Piper has to say about this himself in a quote, powerful quote. Many Christians in the West think that the day of sending missionaries from our churches is past. This is tragic. The way of putting that would be, well, let them share, shed their blood. We'll just send money. It is uninformed, he says, to assume that local indigenous churches or nearby missionaries can always reach a people better than Western missionaries. In pioneer missionary situations, there are, there are no local churches to do the work. Moreover, there is no assurance that a nearby missionary will be more effective than a Western one in learning the new language or crossing the culture to teach the truth. Jesus was going to the people. That's how he gained this heart for who they were. They were. Second, Jesus was intentional in his missiology. So you probably have a Bible class or a missions class perhaps here at Trinity. You're studying about missiology. But the bottom line was that Jesus was, was teaching incarnationally. He was being real with them. My wife and I and my family, we served in a, a closed access country in Asia for 14 years. And uh, one of the things we did, we moved there because we didn't think we could do missions by Skype, right? And then we moved into the neighborhood. And, but then one thing we did is we began to do what? We began to learn their language, learn their culture. Now, obviously, I look very Asian. I blended in pretty well. But... <laughs> We had, to, we had to figure that out. That's what Jesus does, doesn't he? Look, he says he's going into the synagogues. Why the synagogues? What does he know about these people? He knows their language. He knows their culture. He knows their stories. He knows their hurts, their hopes, their angers, their joys. He, he's gotten in, he's gotten his hands dirty with them, living with them, eating with them, crying with them. He was living incarnationally with them. And that's what we've got to do to have this heart, this passion for the lost, for, to see people the way he does. This next picture is a fun one. What's the cultural distance between these two folks? Is it pretty, pretty close? Say no. No, it's pretty far, isn't it? Right? But look at this. If she wanted to take the gospel to him, how far would she have to move? What would she have to do? She'd have to go pretty, pretty different lifestyle probably, right? What if he wanted to take the gospel to her? He'd have to change some things, right? He'd have to give up Hollywood for one thing. Pierce, you know. There's a, there's a vast difference. Culture matters. I can't just walk across the street. I can't just walk into another country. I can't even walk into downtown Chicago. There are places I have to, I have to become part of that neighborhood. So the gospel puts on clothing that makes sense. That's what Jesus did. He was going to the people. He was teaching them in their context Paul says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 19 to 23. For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I may win the more. To the Jews I became a Jew, so that I might win the Jews. Those who are under the law as under the law, so that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without law as without law, so that I might win those who are without law. To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, so that... I may by all means save some. I do all things for the sake of the gospel. That's what Jesus did. He personified that. He, he, in, he became flesh. That's what we've got to do if we want to see people the way Jesus does. If we've got to get into their neighborhood. The third thing, it says, Jesus was going through all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. He was proclaiming that Messiah has come. He was intentional in his message. See, it's not enough even just to go and, and do good things in some of these hard places. 
build water, give wells and, and take food and build houses and teach English and, and teach health care and a variety of other things. Those things are powerful. And they give you a platform for the gospel. But the gospel must come with that. See, otherwise, if I'm, if I'm in Asia and I'm just doing all these good things, guess who gets the credit for that? I do. If it's not accompanied with the gospel, they may think, wow, he's a really good Buddhist. He's a really good Muslim. He's a really good Hindu, right? No, I want them to know who I serve and why I serve, right? The gospel is the foundation. That's what Jesus does. He comes and he shows up and says, there's a different way to live. I'm the king. I'm here. The kingdom has come. The gospel is here. He shared the gospel of the kingdom. Fourthly, he was intentional in his method. He healed with empathy, compassion. It says he was healing every kind of disease, every kind of sickness. Now, I, part of the reason he did that, no doubt, is that he is the king. He is the Messiah. He is God, correct? So he shows up on the scene and, and God shows up and things change. He's demonstrating that I have the power to do this. I have power over death, as well as everything else going on around here, boys and girls, right? That's what he's saying. It also, it, it certainly shows that he's saying, this is the way the kingdom is going to be. This is, this is the, 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 the coming attractions, like we see at the movies, right? It's a foretaste of what it's going to be like. But why does Jesus touch people to heal them? Do you ever think about that? He doesn't have to. He didn't always, right? Sometimes he just healed them. Sometimes he just spoke a word and the dead rose. What is it about that? Think about this. If this guy has leprosy, how much has he ever been touched in his life? Never. What does it mean to him to have someone come up and do this in his life? Oh, my gosh. I think Jesus heals not just because he's God. That's, that's true not just to show that he's the Messiah and that, and that this is what the kingdom's about. I think it shows the compassionate heart of God. This young individual needs to be, feel the touch of healing. And that's what we do when we go out. We show, it's not just nuts and bolts, here's the gospel, bada boom, here we're out of here. No, it's getting into the community. It's going deep. It's going hard. It's going to the hard places and showing the compassionate love of God. Man, if he uses you to heal somebody, that would be really cool. But more than that, it's, it's touching someone. We had a team that worked with a group of, of lepers in this Asian context. And this community, they were all healed of, of Hansen's disease at that point. But they go in there week after week. And as the team goes in and touches these people who haven't been touched in 40 years, what does that mean to them? And as they're there caring about them, loving on them, they're hearing the music of the gospel too. They're talking about Jesus and who he is and how he loves them and how he cares for them. And after a while, the, they, then they see that there's also this dirty puddle of water over here, and they need to get some clean water. So yeah, we're going to help these guys get some water piped into their village too, by the way. So we're going to work on that together, this, this church, this local house church, and, and our team, and, and another church back in the U.S., and others like that, all working together to bring clean water into this village. As a result of the months in, that they were together working on this project, this whole village hears the music of the gospel. And I wish I had the video. I could show you. It's a, it's a, it's a wild, radical uh, statement going on. It's, this this guy's preaching in his language. It's loud and boisterous. And this whole village, about, it's not big. It's about 40 people, 50 people. We're all staying in a room going, yes, Jesus, we believe in you. They've all come to faith because of the compassionate touch of the gospel. That's the heart of Jesus. That's how we get to know that's how we see people the way Jesus is, by getting in there and getting our hands dirty, getting dirt under our fingernails. That's what Jesus did. He touched people. You can't do it remotely. Look at Matthew chapter 9, verse 10. It says, And then it happened that as Jesus was reclining at the table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and were dining with Jesus and his disciples. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble of heart. I will, you'll find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. He was, who does Jesus hang out with? <laughs> you just got to love who he hangs out with. That's what he's asking of us. Get into the neighborhood and hang out. He's intentional in his movement, his missiology, his message, and his method. Verse 35, 
leads to 36, which leads to 37 and 38 to pray for the harvest, which leads to Matthew 28 to go. That's what he wants you to do. Do you and I see people the way Jesus does? I want to leave you with three ways, three possible applications for you coming up for this spring break and this summer, that perhaps you can use these things to see people the way Jesus does. The first one is something we call crisis response from Reach Global. Take a moment. We want to show you this quick video, and then we'll come up and have some comments on it. So in seeing the multitude, he felt compassion on them because they were distressed and downcast like sheep without a shepherd. There it is. How do I get that heart? I've got to get out there and get my hands dirty. Going, teaching, proclaiming, healing, compassionately. Here's some opportunities for you. We've got tables set up across the way in the Waybright Center. You'll see us there. We've got a free book for you from T.J. Eddington, Live Like You Mean. If you'll come by and just say hi to us and give us your, your bank account numbers and stuff like that. <laughs> no, just your credit card. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. These are free. We just want to talk to you and, and say hi. We'll be here all, all week. And, and just uh, thank you for serving here. We pray that you'll go across the street or across the world, whatever it is. That we pray that you'll be Jesus to somebody this morning. Thank you, April.